Perfect. Well, thank you again, and uh, Klaus and your whole committee, uh, congratulations. It's been, uh, as most of us have said, it's been a very enjoyable meeting and stimulating and still uh, quite impressive how uh, we're still learning all the time. So, Anchor Approach Hip Resurfacing with a positioning table. I do have uh, relevant uh, conflicts in that regard. Uh, I do uh, do some consultant work for uh, Microport and as well uh, Math Ortho, which is uh, one of the uh, designers uh, of one of these implants. As alluded to earlier, uh, the choice of surgical approach is evolving. A recent AUKUS survey we did uh, with John Clohesi showed that the anterior approach now is over 35%, and I think even more the recent AUKUS is even up to 40%, and this is a, a, a trend worldwide. The question is, is that does the anterior approach provide any sort of benefit? And people always kind of say, well, maybe for the first four to six weeks, but after that it's irrelevant. But if you look at the uh, full patient journey, when you look at the tier two aspect of, of care, of quality, uh, the anterior approach surely does provide added value because of the more rapid recovery and earlier return to work. Anterior approach we know is the only purely internervous, intermuscular approach to the hip. Uh, it's been described by uh, others. Uh, uh, the one that really first described is uh, Hüter, which, which is a German uh, uh, anatomist. And that's evolved over the uh, several last decades uh, with uh, Chris Keggy using a regular table and a various uh, implant uh, as well as instruments. Joel Matta, really popular, uh, popular the positioning table with fluoroscopy. And then you have uh, Martin Krizma and Bill Hozak uh, in terms of regular on a regular uh, table. So supine does provide a significant advantage as well because you get a more reliable cup orientation. And Charlie started his hip replacement in the supine position. This is a paper that George Gramatopoulos did looking at how accurate is cup orientation depending if the patient is in the lateral position or supine. And you can definitely see that for the same surgeon in the supine position, cup orientation is more reliable. And again, that's very uh, uh, cheap. There's no need for robots. Uh, this is just a no navigation device, just an interop x-ray confirming cup orientation. So the purpose of this uh, presentation is to analyze uh, survivorship of hip resurfacing done the, uh, with the Huter anterior approach uh, by myself, look at causes of revision and uh, uh, other aspects. The main implants were used with the Conserve Plus resurfacing system by Microport, as well as a Corn uh, device where we ran a uh, randomized trial. Again, why the anterior approach with resurfacing? Well, not only do you need uh, a good preservation of soft tissue envelope, but also you do preserve the vascularity of the femoral head. In about 10% of cases, I release the tensor off the wing, a bit like you do with the PAO to facilitate head exposure. This is a uh, accelerated video, just, I think just to give you some insight, you go into within the tensor fascial sheet, you expose, then you, uh, I remove about the lateral third of the hip capsule, then uh, once you have that done, you'll uh, put the hip a bit under distraction, and then you'll put a, uh, a Weber spoon inside the socket to dislocate the hip, which is not done under traction. Once you have that, the leg is placed in extension external rotation. You have excellent visualization of femoral head neck junction. You do appropriate sizing using the same gauges we use for impingement surgery. Remove your uh, deformity, your cam, uh, off that like a total knee. You identify the neck axis. You put your pin down the neck because you see it right there, fairly straightforward. Check your varus valgus orientation. Then you're done, you put your guides and then you just use the instruments carefully not to notch the neck. And I, I use a lot of uh, osteotomes to minimize uh, over dissection of the vasculature, then uh, standard technique, finish that off, do your dome cut. This is pretty standard for any BHR or a DEP, uh, Conserve Plus, a Durham was like that. Then you put the leg in neutral flexion extension then you get, get a bit more of that capsular release, which you would do with a, uh, a lateral approach, then you use these offset reamers. Now I just use these kind of standardized straight reamers, and you can get right easily across the neck. Then you do your sizing, make sure you've got proper sizing, you put your cup in. I, most of the time I just put it in freehand, it's less painful than that large uh, in, impactor. Make sure the cup's well seated. You'll see in my series, that was probably uh, a learning curve aspect and not seeing the acetabular component properly. Once you have that, you can then make sure you finish your preparation of your head. We've used both cemented and cementless femoral component fixation. Uh, it works well. Uh, the, the only disadvantage with the cementless uh, instrumentation, it's a bit bigger. So sometimes it may be a bit difficult to get those reamers down. You reduce interop x-ray. 
So uh, the series I'm talking about is from 2006 to 2015, so that includes my uh, learning curve, over 500 cases, now above more than 800. Uh, majority are males, 49, BMI average 28, average fall up. As uh, everyone's going with Rich's uh, approach here, the basic results, five and 10 years, 94, 92.6%. Obviously, better in males than in females, where you're looking at around 94% in males at 10 years. Mostly uh, osteoarthritis uh, of the hip. Uh, if you look at our proms, obviously, very excellent outcome at two and five years at HOOS and SF12. Uh, if you look at what's more interesting, what led to the uh, issues mostly, uh, cup loosening was mainly the issue. <clears throat> I think mainly related to under preparation of a socket and not good positioning. Uh, there were three types of cup design that were used during that time. What was, to me, kind of interesting, I, I still got femoral neck fractures, which I thought going through the front, preserving the vascularity, uh, and one of them was in a cementless design. So that may be just related to actually torquing or maybe notching of the retinacular vessels and things of that sort, but it can still happen. Uh, if you look at the, uh, the cup designs, uh, mostly were uh, initially in, in North America was a just porous coated uh, Cobalt chrome, no HA. Uh, then they introduced this kind of a titanium biofoam on the cobalt, which I think was not that good because of the, I think there was some passive corrosion happening. And now Maiden Lee is uh, just a cobalt chrome shell with HA, which has been very good. But you can see after the first uh, few hundred cases, the issue of cup uh, seating and uh, fixation was resolved. Uh, so is choice of surgical approach important? Well, uh, Damien did a nice paper with Pat Campbell where they looked at uh, retrieved femoral heads, and you definitely see that with the uh, anterior-based approach or non-posterior approach, you have less uh, damage to the femoral head vascularity. Now, not all these cases reached osteonecrosis, but certainly in long term, I think the more viable cells you have, the better it is for that implant. Uh, anterior approach bilateral, I think this uh, is very helpful in terms of recovering this patient's 10 days post bilateral. So, should we still do hip resurfacing? Well, I really think it's the preferred option. It provides more precise biomechanics, and this is a prospective randomized trial by Pascal Ventidotti, and this is a nice paper by uh, uh, Justin Cobb's group. We looked at the range of motion and, and comparing uh, the hip resurfacing, dual mobility, 28 and 36 head, and the resurfacing reproduced better the overall native range of motion than any other construct. If you think about longevity of joint replacement, this is somewhat a controversial paper, but it is published in Lancet, which has a reasonable impact factor. And based on registry, uh, patient, you can expect at 25 years that 58, only 58% 58 of patients will have, uh, not have had revision surgery. So when you look in the very young patient, I think resurfacing with bone preservation has an excellent uh, role here. And when we think about uh, Raphael's uh, presentation, what is the optimal reconstruction of an implant. Well, you have to look at the whole design together. A lot of times you say, well, we didn't have any uh, component revision, we just revised the, so the liner, we just had dislocation, we had, we had a paraprosthetic fracture, but you have to look at the whole construct. And so you want to minimize the wear, predictable fixation, cost-effective, maximum function, uh, durable, buyer inert, and easy in implant. So I think in that regards, I think resurfacing still has a role. And finally, I think it remains a technically demanding intervention. As you, most of you know now, there are both ceramic on ceramic and now highly crossing resurfacing that are being implanted in females and young males. So I think it has a bright future. Thank you very much. Merci.